Do any boogers hanging out? Boogers? Any boogers hanging out? Cheese? I'm really blown away at the, uh, so basically, I'm really blown away at what happened with that 2K Row video. But I did not want to do that. And the only reason why I did that and the only reason why I pushed so hard is because the pressure from the community, you know what I mean? Like I was like trying to show off or something. I mean, as pathetic as that sounds. Hashtag truth. Do I open this for you, this cheese? Um, but but I mean I'm excited. I mean I was excited. To, I mean I guess like, people always say, hey, when are you gonna put that fitness to use? So I have fitness, and I was able to put it to use on a rower, and it was really nice. What the training think tank people said, what Max El Haj says, and those guys said, I respect them. It's just cool. If it, if, it gets, if it gets one more person up off their ass and doing something, then I'm pretty stoked. And it's inspired videos like this now, right? To reflect on, to do other content so people can see what I'm doing. It doesn't make me the most comfortable for people to see me in my five inch shorts. Whoa, boys, look at those pelicans. Look at those pelicans, they're gonna dive, they're gonna dive. So that was cool. That 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 was a really that was a, it was actually a great week for the podcast. The podcast has been growing now for a year, every single day basically for a year. And occasionally when we do have our spikes, it's two steps forward and one step back. And the game season coming up is going to be like that too. But right now we're having this huge growth. I'm I'm really happy at the breadth of the content we're getting. So one day's people one day people might be seeing something you know that's uh deep and emotionally inspiring like the Gazan podcast and then other times they get to see you know the the most crass side of me um, you know crybaby rant side of me and I just like the fact that I don't have to be in just one one behavior this is, I was just in a store here and a girl came up to me and hugged me crying saying thank you so much for the Alex Gazan podcast some just random chick just saw me in a store here with, with my kids and that's the fact that it, I, I just can't believe it impacted people like that. To me, it was just a normal conversation, to be honest. I liked her, she was open, she's cool. My takeaways is I'm glad there's people like that in humanity. But other than that, I thought she just seemed like a really down to earth, cool, cool, cool girl. Oh, you wanna know what I saw on the internet yesterday? I didn't actually see it. Someone told me that they saw Brooke Ents post that was saying, hey, this is bullshit to force people to get vaccinated. And I really want to get Brooke Ents on the podcast and, and, and like have a talk with her. Okay, I did get in a little bit of trouble for my mom for um, banging on uh, Dave Eubanks a little bit. I, I put him through the ringer and through the logical cheese grater. And I told my mom, I go, it's not like I was like being mean to him. It's not like I like went on his Facebook and made fun of his family or you know anything like that or taunted him for his fucking clothes he wore. I wasn't being rude. I was just looking. I was being rude, but I was looking at stuff he had posted and then assessing it. And obviously he posted it because he wanted attention for it, right? So I gave him attention for it. And you know, if you if you don't know the difference between an unfertilized chicken egg and a uh, fetus, then I'm here to help him out. <laughs> That's not very apologetic. I'm not trying to be apologetic, but I don't like to upset my mom. I want my mom to be, uh, um, even in this enlightened state of nothingness that I live in, uh, I do want my mom still to be proud of me. When I went back and I saw, or someone made a clip of the fact that I was interviewing uh, Danielle Brandon, and when I was telling her about how impressed I was by Justin Kotler and his passion for her in a relationship, I was, I, I was, when I was watching that, in hindsight, I couldn't remember how I spotted something was wrong between her and Kotler. And even when I watched the video and I watched Danielle's face, I don't know how I spotted that. But when I'm watching the video, obviously I'm, I'm telling her about how great I think Justin Kotler is and her relationship is. And I must have seen something from her that didn't jive with me. And I went, oh shit, what's going on here? Because she wasn't like smiling or giving me the social cues or the nuances that matched with what I was saying. And I'm not one of those people who just talks, like I'm watching you to get feedback, right? I'm watching you to get feedback. And I wasn't getting the feedback I wanted, so then I paused the interview and everyone saw it in real time because it was live and I said, dude, is there a problem between you and the underdogs? And she goes, well, and that's what opened that whole thing up. It was crazy. But, but 
another component of that, reflecting back on last week, is Morning Chalk Up made a post that said something along the lines of um, exclusive content we've heard from uh, whatever Daniel's um, manager's name is, Juicy or something, same guy who does um, Josh Bridges, and we have exclusive uh, news from Justin Kotler regarding, and it's breaking news. And they did that whole article without mentioning like, hey, this story accidentally broke on the Sevon podcast, and now we have statements from Juicy and Justin Kotler, and I'm like, Okay, I mean, I mean it's just, it just—it just makes me realize that they—that they—they're not storytellers. They're not truth tellers. They don't contextualize. There's no relativity. Woo, woo! Oh, wow! And the highlight for the community, and it hurts me to say this because I like Heart, Heidi Krum so much, but something that we saw happen, and I'm sure a lot of people didn't catch it necessarily, but it's a huge historical moment for the Sevon Podcast community was when we were had a Joyelle on and he'd come clean about getting all juiced up. And, uh, and, and Heidi in the comments goes, I wish the girl from Mayhem, Ellie, would come clean. And there in the comments, Ellie goes, here I am, Heidi. I'm open to chat anytime. And it's like there we saw something of technology and community and CrossFit. It's like that was such a unique, groundbreaking, historical moment, not only for the podcast, but just for the way reporting is done. I, I, I'm not able to perfectly articulate it, but I know that was huge. And uh, that's going to be, uh, there's, there's, I mean, there's been a year of momentum of the podcast exploding, but in this last month, it's like just gone to new levels. So. Bump. To be honest with you, I can't believe how well the game shows are going. Bobby, and it's so funny, someone in, quiet, boy. someone in the comments wrote, um, I can't believe how Savon, you can tell Savon's finally preparing or some shit like that. I was like, you asshole. Like, I prepare for every show. And I don't prepare for the game shows any more than any other show. Matter of fact, my guests, I, I spend hours preparing for them. Probably like 8, 8 p.m. to midnight every night, that's what I'm doing. I'm preparing for guests. But the shows were a huge hit. Brian seems happier than ever. That's a trip. Brian seems really happy. Um, uh, JR and uh, Taylor are definitely getting better every single show, which is really cool. And the numbers are off the chart. I mean, the numbers are crazy. We're, we're, we've, we are the space. We've taken over the space and we are the space. And I'm super duper inspired by uh, the Khaleesi over there at the Morning Chalk Up. Just how hard she's working. So there's great synergy with everyone in the in, in the space. Um, I've even been watching um, some of the stuff that CrossFit Games has been putting out. Uh, the stuff that Sean Woodland does. I prefer it's called Games General or something. There's not usually not a lot of the information in there that I'm looking for, but it, it still inspires me. Um, and uh, we started a new programming show. I don't know how often we're gonna do that. The goal is every other week. The thought of that makes me nauseous, that much game shit. But I had a ton of fun. The first show, the inaugural show was two hours and 48 minutes with um, with JR and Taylor. And we fucking murdered it. So, and the Hiller Fit and Review show, all the, all the CrossFit content is killing. And I think we're having a substantial impact, to be honest with you if I want to uh, float my own boat here, on the sale of L1s. The attention that we're bringing to the L1s I think is huge and super duper important, and it's the most important work I do. This game season is going to be our best stuff ever. I mean, obviously we've only done one games before, but um, it's going to be uh, the best game coverage anyone has. It's sad, it's not a loss to me, but it's a huge loss to CrossFit. Uh, games community and the CrossFit Games that they don't embrace us more regardless of whatever we say they should just fully embrace us they should lean into us and since they don't they only hurt themselves we may have 500,000 people watching their live feed after it's been up for a month but no one will be talking about that content they'll be talking about the stuff that we do and all the people we have on the ground and the booth we have the Paper Street Coffee booth and the thousands of CEO shirts black and California hormone shirts that will be given away at the CrossFit Games this year. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be a gnarly year. And we're gonna do more coverage than ever. So many interviews lined up, 
such crazy great cooperation from the coaches and the athletes. That's another crazy thing. You know, everyone from Max El Haj to uh, Yami to um, uh, yeah, I bet you I, I need to re reach out to Ben Bergeron. Just, and just all everyone's been so pleasant. Rich Froning, the Mayhem Empire. Everyone's been great.